So this is my horse pasture. It runs from here up to those trees. I have about 200 acres. And we'll come in here and watch them come in. We like a horse uh, that's just the regular saddle horses will only make me money about five months out of the year. But the half drafts and full drafts, I can usually be making money on them 10 and a half, 11 months out of the year. Because when we're done here, they'll usually get a lot of November off and then we go into our sled season and then we'll put another three to 400 miles on them there doing sleigh rides. And so a big, you know, 1400 pound half draft is just a money maker. They can hunt, they can pack the, the guests in the summer. We can do sleigh rides with them. I mean, there's nothing that a horse can do that they won't. And so right. those are the ones. I don't, I try not to have a lot of horses that are running on welfare. So they've all got to pull their weight. Um, and I'm, I'm fine investing four years into a colt. You know, it, it's five years. If you take the mare out of production to raise the baby, and she might catch the tail end of the season, pack a few guests, just enough to pay for her feed for that winter. And then that colt's going to be doing nothing for two years. And then a guide's going to be training it for two years. And then, I mean, it's, it's five years before they give you anything back. And I'm fine with that. But I don't want something that's just here eating, middle-aged. Dude ranching, guest ranching, trail riding, whatever you want to call it. If anybody's had a bad experience, it was probably with a barn sour horse. And so the horses are never allowed to go faster coming back than we went out. And I don't have any barn sour horses. No, they never even pick up the pace. And a lot of that also comes from when they get back here off of their morning ride, they could be here for five or 10 minutes and then they go again. So there's no incentive to get home early. And so, uh, yeah, barn sour is very, very dangerous and that's how we curtail that so i usually throw the the halters on and then when we have 10 or 12 employees going one of them will take the horse put them here and then all the horses have their own gear this is our tack room every horse has its own stuff so this is homer's it's been homer's every day for years and years. He has the right pads, the right bridles. So that makes it really good for new help because as soon as they learn the horses, then they automatically know the tack. That's an American Brabant Perch and Cross. The same cross on the top with a uh, Friesian Perch and Mother. So those there are three quarter siblings. That's a good size. That's a good size for a... Hoss? Eesh. That's a good size for a, for a uh, dude horse. Like a big horse. Yeah, just solid, you know. It's a long way down. Yeah, you want them to stay on. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't want to have a lot of high withers or bony backs sure. because those people aren't going to ride right. And they will tend to soar up a horse more than someone that doesn't know how to ride. Okay. And so people don't understand how much the horse is compensating for. Not right. just the way they act, but also the way they're built. Okay. You get horses like this little guy here, and he, you know, a 12 year old's probably as old as he's gonna pack. He's starting to get a little older too. And, and now they're heavy. And, and yeah, you just, you, yeah. You just, you, we're always kind of keeping an eye on them. They, we put 2,200 miles on every horse last year, which really? mo most people don't do that. Not even. 2,200. 2,200 miles country. under saddle, wow. riding him. Ariel, you want to go back there and get on Simon? And this young lady, what's her name? This is Evangeline. Evangeline, let's get you right here on cash. Here, put your left foot right there, and hop on up there. 
and get your heels down. Let's roll this up one. Roni, or Ringo. Let's put this guy right here on Ringo. Grab up uh, Chappie for the little gal. Right. 